Isaac e no Elliot Tebe. Yes, sir. Good evening, Derek. Good evening, Elliot Tebe. So, yeah. I think we are uh, live now. The system is back. Technology. Yeah, so just apologize to the viewers on Facebook that uh, we are back. <clears throat> there was a technical glitch. Um, it happens. These things are man made. So, such things are going to happen. And if you are going to record anything yourself, um, you're likely to, to, at some point, encounter such a difficulty. Do you want to talk to your. Are you live on, on Facebook now? Yes, I'm live, and uh, I want to apologize to my viewers uh, for the technical fault, but we are back in live. We hope this time around to be able to complete the mission, the chapter two, with no technical hitches. Thank you for your patience. Yeah. So basically, what we are doing is we've tried to do something that we haven't done before. So what we're doing is we're both live on our Facebook profiles from our respective homes, uh, but at the same time, we are recording this Skype um, interview. There's an application called a uh, call recorder, which records a Skype interview or a Skype call. So after we record it, we can save it on our computers and then we can upload it to YouTube. Now, I want to find out where we were. Um, or maybe I should start again. Chapter two, it's a quick rundown, 12 points that I'd like you to address. Or you choose what you want to address because it's, it's your book and ultimately to sell the book, you can't, you know. I think, I think, I think we can, uh, yeah, you, you, you actually summarize uh, the book. Yeah. And uh, uh, I can actually sort of put the flesh to the skeleton now. Do you think uh, this last time did I finish everything? Or should I yes. quickly go through it? I finished, so I can I can use the the I can use the but for the benefit of those who are joining. Indeed, yeah. Do you think that because it doesn't take me? It takes me less than a minute to do that. It's fine. You can you can summarize. Uh, okay, so so this is chapter two of um, Zimbabwe, my home, my frustration, a book written by Elliot Feather. Um, in chapter two, we've done chapter one. I'm going to put chapter one, the link to the video for chapter one. I'm going to put it in the show notes for the face for the YouTube uh, when when I upload it to YouTube. So this is now chapter two, which we're looking at. And in chapter two, he talks about, or you earlier talk about growing up in an African context. Um, the first thing that you talk about is a competitive childhood. This whole book is based on articles of defiance. And I see a lot of defiance in, um, actually in this chapter, I see a lot of that defiance from an um, early childhood up to up to early adulthood, okay? So you talk about a competitive childhood, you talk about uh, getting involved in boxing, uh, in, um, in football, you talk about George Shire and Pele and Muhammad Ali, but you also mentioned that at, at that time you're not really you didn't really know these people but everyone was talking about them okay then you talk about not being allowed to go and head cattle with the big boys because um, your father wanted you to focus on your education at a, at a young age you talk about the rainy day you got lost and ended up in another na in a neighboring country to Zimbabwe as a very young kid of, of about five but yeah. eventually you found your way home um, you talk about the kips, which were these places where people were kept during the war to protect them uh, from from the war situation. And you yeah. talk about the um, the war itself and how you went to school during the war and after the war, and that to go to school you had to learn to to, to touch your ear like this. If you could not touch your ear like this, they yeah. Simba, hello, Ronald. Uh, it meant that you could not go to school. And then you also went to school. Uh, in, in primary school, you're learning with people who are 14 to 35. You became president of a school magazine when you moved to Harare, and you're going to a group A school, which is when you began to see racial discrimination uh, because we still had white, um, we still had uh, some of the members of staff and some of the students 
uh, were white and you could see there was racial discrimination being practiced there. Uh, the AP Zimbabwe boy, right? And then there was um, you became student rep for Hilda Hoon's campaign, a civic group, uh, yeah. which was looking at issues of apartheid in South Africa. Yes. And your first encounter with uh, the issues, the political issues in Zimbabwe, was exp you experienced them during the 1991 to 1992 drought. Yeah. Uh, during which time you began to see that things could have been done differently. Indeed, people, yes. People were struggling. And then you talk about your your brief stint with Zanundonga and eventually uh, your full-fledged political career with the MDC. Indeed, yes. Right. Yeah. So <clears throat> this is the summary. You decide what you want to talk about. It's your book. Uh, it's your chance to for people to to understand the thought process which went into writing the book, uh, the, the, the the defiant mood that you were in from a young age, yeah. and your decision to enter into politics even when you, you still didn't under, really understand what politics was. So <coughs> over to you. Yes, I think if you if you look at the uh, the title of the book, uh, Zimbabwe, my home and frustration, uh, and then articles of defiance. It actually sort of summarizes uh, what I think Zimbabwe should be and what Zimbabwe should have attained after independence. And it also is sort of uh, it, it, it's a package of memories of an African child growing up in both under racial discrimination, growing up under this euphoria of independence, which never materialized. And those are the tribulations that actually came in uh, through me joining uh, politics at a, at a young age. Uh, firstly, with, uh, with, with Zanundong and then with MDC. But let, let, let me say that the, the first chapter, I know we, we covered the first chapter uh, uh, a couple of months back, was to set the scene of the book uh, so that I was mindful of the fact that some people who are going to lay their hands on the book might not even know where Zimbabwe is. Yeah. And they might not even know the composition of the people of Zimbabwe. So in such a way that uh, I structured it to give the setting of the book, describe where Zimbabwe geographically is, uh, the people of Zimbabwe, in terms of the main languages of Zimbabwe, and uh, the main political parties, the historical background, mm. going back to 1890 up to uh, 2011. So it, it's a package of uh, a lot of years of ups and downs in terms of socio-economic and political struggle of the Zimbabwean people. Now, back to chapter two that we are discussing today. Uh, as I tell us to reflect uh, that uh, probably I was never meant to enjoy the fruits of independence, the fruits of tranquility, because at a very young age, and uh, I think, uh, as you have rightly summarized it, uh, in 1975, I found myself and my parents being thrown into these protective camps uh, in the Mukumbura border post there. And uh, even the ABC of Australia, uh, one journalist uh, by the name of Wright, when he visited the Mukumbura border posts, the so-called protected keeps. The again, the Smith regime wanted the people to believe that they're being protected by the Smith regime against the the guerrillas. But uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, we were being used as uh, as human shield against the warring parties. So it became you know the the pawn or the cannon fodder of, of raging war. Uh, so at a very young age, uh, 44 years, I 
find myself in this protected equipment center. I was uh, I was locked up in there uh, for the next six years until 1980. Uh, and, and, and oh, what we would uh, see was raging wars, ricocheting bullets. And as I've said, in terms of uh, growing up like any other child, playing soccer, uh, again, fighting, mm. uh, which is, which is typical of rural boys those times. But then, uh, again, the whole episode of the six the years, and I and Tapiwa. the whole episode of the six years, I look at it and reflect as years that I was denied my youth, that I was denied my dignity as a human being. And it toughened me. And in such, and I think if you look at the chapter two, at the end, I define myself as a person of defiance that since my incarceration for six years in these barbed wire protective keeps, aged, it, it became a journey, a journey that today I'm still, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still working. And every day is a flip of, is a flip of pages of misery. Mm-hmm. And from 1980, again, uh, then started school, and uh, in, in a space of about two years, I went to four primary schools because of the war. Mm-hmm. So we were being moved from one school to another because sometimes it was not safe for the children to continue uh, going to school that way. Uh, and again, when I finished the, the, the one of the incidents which is still vivid in my my mind was uh, after 1980 we went to back to Nyagatondo, which was our previous uh, village uh, before, the, before the war. And uh, yes, there was this makeshift school made of poor and dagger, uh, no chairs, no tables. Uh, it was a horrendous time. Immediately after the war. What year was 1980? We are now talking of 1988. Yeah. We are talking about 1980 now. And, and, so, and from the pictures I've seen on social media, such, yes. such schools still exist? Oh, yes. You'll be surprised that now, 37 years after independence, we still have those schools in Zimbabwe. And it's, um, it, it's very unfortunate. Uh, in this 21st century, you would think after 37 years, you would have put the necessary infrastructure to develop those schools. But unfortunately, this is Robert Mugabe and the PF government. So, and, I mean, after living six years in the Kips, you get, you move into a, a town group A school in Harare, and you begin to experience, was it the same kind? I mean, did that remind you of the racial discrimination that you were experiencing? Did that remind you of the Kips? It did. I think, I think you find uh, whatever, uh, we talk about the lived experience and whatever experience you go through, it becomes part and parcel of you. Mm-hmm. And whatever decisions you make in life, it's a reflexivity of what you've gone through. So yes, after finishing my primary school, I went to my Donna boarding school. Uh, my Donna boarding school, uh, again, the school was still in a dilapidated state after, after the war. Mm-hmm. and. Uh, You'll be surprised that the, the the age group of people going to form one those years could be thirty five years old. Somebody going to uh, to, to to form one. So they, I, I, I remember I remember in uh, in the book you mentioned that some of them used to smoke uh, in in the classroom. Indeed, yes. Uh, I mean, the behavior was horrendous. You can imagine. Yeah, I was a small boy, and then he thrown in this. Uh, class of war veterans. It was to, to me I, I it didn't bother me. The only problem it did a bit bothered me is their disruptive uh, behavior when I wanted to, to learn. Yeah. And they were not some of them, most of them they were not interested in, in learning. 
it was like they were being forced to go back to school. But but you but said those, those who wanted to learn, they they you actually became they protected you because they wanted to copy your homework. Indeed, yes, yeah. So we we, we, we survived harmoniously with the, you know with, with our brothers and sisters uh, who had just left to. Uh, the, who had just come from 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 war, so it was a trend in rural schools those those years. But after after uh, my brother and I secondary school, I then went to uh, to Glenora High in in Harare, where uh, I became the president of magazine club yeah. and the continued fighting. Before, before you continue, there can I just say to my Facebook. Uh, those that have just joined, I'm talking to Elliot Pebe, we are discussing his book, uh, Zimbabwe, My Home, My Frustration, it's available on Amazon, uh, but um, we are not uh, here to sell the book, we are here to talk about uh, the thought process that went that went through his head when, when he was, uh, his mind when he was writing the book, so we've discussed a number of issues, and now he's just going to, to talk about uh, his his experience as a as a student in Form One was it Form One you started there? Uh, form One was my brother now secondary school in Arare. It yeah. was now Form Three. Okay, so in Form Three in Arare, that's when he, he experienced a bit of the uh, racial discrimination because there were still white students there. There were um, white members of staff. Um, apparently, the caning was more towards the, the black students than towards the white students. They used to be able to walk in straight, but the black students were stopped by the gate. And the, the funny thing is they were disciplined by a black teacher. So he's just going to talk about that experience um, as, he, as he started uh, going to school in the town in Arara. Yes. So I was, Can uh, I just say also that if you have any question you want to ask him, if you put it in the comments, then I can tell Elliot what the question is that maybe he can address it. And maybe the same with your viewers on, because you are also live on Facebook. Yes. So yes, I was uh, at the Glenora High uh, Secondary School, and uh, I was the president of Magazine Club. And the first thing that I did was, uh, I was... I was writing articles, so little did I know that one day I'll be writing books. But I enjoyed writing, uh, enjoyed researching as well. Uh, but again, it wasn't long before I was in trouble with the authorities when I authored an article about teachers abusing students, young girls, uh, including concrete examples of students as young as 14 years old impregnated by teachers and the headmaster wasn't happy with that so I was uh, I was called by the headmaster uh, and I was fired for authoring such an article without authority from you the mean, headmaster you mean you were expelled from the school <clears throat> or fired yes. from, from your position as a uh, I was fired from my position as president of the magazine club, and uh, subsequently I was expelled from school. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, again, this, the, the, the title is about my home and frustration, articles of defiance. Although here the, the theme is about the politics, but not necessarily only the politics of MDC versus Zanu PF or the political. Uh, landscape of the dog, but also the, the social aspect. So it seems to me, even at that young age, I, I was always defined and uh, I actually repositioned myself as a, as, a, as, a, as a social democrat. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yes, there I was, I was fired from my position, I was expelled from school. And the next thing is, and of course, every parent wouldn't be happy. Uh, yeah. And uh, again, my parents were not happy with that. And they thought uh, I was I was a bit too, too political for my age. Yeah. So I needed to concentrate on education first and then uh, politics later. But 
that uh, to me I've always uh, believed that you cannot separate politics from reasoning yeah and the science is it has been part and parcel of me uh, to fight for my rights and not necessarily my rights but to fight for other people's rights uh, so then I appealed to uh, to I think, I, I think if you tell the whole story, then people won't buy the book. <laughs> so why <laughs> why don't you move on to your maybe talk about the civic group? Um, yeah. So you the so, campaign yeah. against apartheid in South Africa. Indeed. So, so, with your, with your, yes. So uh, again, uh, just in summary, I did appeal, uh, and by then the minister of education was Zingai Mtumbuka. And then uh, I was I was reinstated. Zingai was my neighbor. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, yes, I was reinstated, and uh, you could expect then I became a hero at the school uh, for unethical such malpractices. But then after that, I moved to Allen Watson for my A levels. Uh, this was Group A schools. That's where racial discrimination was rife. Mm. I fought racial discrimination in that school, and I was expelled again for the second time. <laughs> <laughs> I then appealed again uh, to the Minister of Education, and Minister of Education again, Zingam Tumbuka, intervened, mm. and then I was reinstated. But even during that time, when I was um, uh, doing my A-level to Ali Wilson and uh, became the president of the student union, I became so much involved against the, the war in South Africa, against apartheid. Uh, I was the secretary, uh, the student secretary general for Heal the Wounds campaign. And uh, uh, my dad, James Mandad, was actually the public relations officer for that organization, Heal the Wounds campaign. So I used to, to give uh, speeches to gatherings, meetings, forums yeah. on South Africa, articulating and demanding the release of Nelson Mandela. Okay, uh, I think uh, people will read all about that in the book. <laughs> I'm yes. you short because yes. I know you can you can talk you can talk even uh, and finish the whole book, and people don't have to to, to buy. Talk so about yes. the drought. So the Talk yeah. about the drought. Yes. So, so, so yes, the civic activism, I've been there. And then eventually there was this decapitating drought of, two, of, of 1992, uh, which disseminated the approach of production throughout the country. And uh, the government of Robert Mugabe has appeared that time. Corruption had already crept in. And uh, there were and able to alleviate the sufferings of the people throughout the country. The, you believe, my hermana? So yes, and um, it, I, I, I sort of thought and evaluated and analyzed the response of the government uh, in response to the drought, and I thought they could have done it better. Mm -hmm. But here it was the government uh, that was entrained in corruption and uh, not necessarily responding to the needs of the majority of the people. Yeah. So I decided then to join politics and have my voice heard. Okay, now, so, the, talk to me about the, the primary school teacher who asked you what you want to become when you grow up. Indeed, I was asking, uh, I was then, I think it was grade, I was in grade six, uh, a very young boy, and as you go in primary school, people would be, uh, you would be asked by the teacher, you know, one after the other, what do you want to become when you grow up? And some would say they wanted to be teachers, some they wanted to be nurses, some they wanted to be doctors, and I said, I want to be a politician. Mm. And they just laughed. Uh, I suppose the, the irony of it is that uh, people didn't know what a politician was. Yeah. Because I'm talking about, you know, small kids. But I, I think I was hardened by the war because I grew up during the Liberation War. Mm -hmm. And I was a bit analytic at a very young age. 
Uh, do you think do you think now they know what a politician is? They think it's just a guy who drives a, a good car and wears a nice suit and has a, a big tummy. I think it's worse now than you know as then because uh, politics has, has actually lost relevance in Zimbabwe uh, because of corruption. Uh, and, uh, it, 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 it is like a means to an end. So, and, how, so what did the drought um, bring about? What, how this defiance in you? How was it triggered by the drought? Yeah, it was triggered by the ground, drought in the sense that uh, I saw people suffering. Uh, it was all in the newspapers and sometimes even on TVs uh, for suffering. And the, the government's response was uh, not as expected. Uh, they didn't have been an idea of how to uh, to respond to the drought, and they were busy amassing wealth amongst themselves through corrupting or corruption tendencies. So I thought, hang on, people need to stand up against this government, against this regime, this corrupt regime. Okay. So yes, I I I, I traveled uh, and then also addressed people in rural areas, telling them that. Okay, before you you talk about that, it, it yeah. does that tie in with your brief stint at Zanondonga and then MDC? Maybe if you can. Yeah, indeed. I mean, I've been at the age to talk about that. Yeah, at the age of nineteen, at the age of nineteen, I was the uh, I was uh, uh, the provincial chairman. Yeah. Uh, of uh, Zanondonga. The, the only reason why I parted ways, uh, in a, it, I, I was there for a short stint. But the policies, when the Bading installer came to Zimbabwe and then promised the uh, people that he was going to give 600 acres to every Zimbabwean mm. and then $300 to every, uh, to un every unemployed person. Mm. So those policies, okay, he was coming from the US, I could understand that he was trying to copy and paste. But it, that was irrelevant as far as the cultural and the capacity of Zimbabwe was concerned. And I tried to talk to the Balinese story to say, look, I think you shouldn't have announced those policies in the airport. You should have, first of all, done your, your, your research once you're in the country and, and get to see what really the people want and try to address the those policies must be aligned with the cultural and the needs of the people. I think that's where uh, I differed with the Nebaling story. But anyway, from there, uh, in 1999, when MDC was formed, that became the, 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 the starting point of my grandia purpose in terms of politics. Uh, I met I met Morgan Sangrai well before MDC was formed at Leicester House uh, in, in 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 Harare, and uh, during that time it was uh, it, it wasn't a political party but a pressure group. So initially MDC was not formed as a political party but yes. as a pressure group. So yes, I was part and part of the people who founded MDC. Uh, as a pressure group. Uh, firstly, it was to pressurize the government uh, to, to address the needs of the people, be it economic, unemployment, uh, and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And, but the government didn't, it, it wasn't prepared to listen, uh, as, as to be expected of Robert Mugabe and Zalpf. And the next thing is, Mugabe declared that uh, he knew that we were hiding behind their, our fingers as a pressure group. And he said, if you want to join politics, then join politics and we meet at the ballot, uh, ballot box. So eventually, right. uh, there were a series of meetings. Yeah, and then people said, well, if Mugabe is challenged us, I'm going to box, to box box now. now. And, Sorry? Uh, I'm going to cut you off now so that people can at least I think people now have some idea of what the book is about we've been talking about chapter two um, um, and um, Elliot has, uh, has gone through we're going to post this video on 
on YouTube so you can you can listen to it and also the book I've got one. Elliot has got some physical copies. If you are in the UK, if you contact him in his inbox on Facebook, I'm sure he, he can arrange to send you one. Uh, where else can people find your book, Elliot? <clears throat> they can find the book. Uh, it's, it's, it's on Amazon, uh, Amazon.co.uk or Amazon.com. Uh, so in whether you are in the in the USA or in Africa, in Europe or Australia, uh, you can buy it online. Thank there you. are selected uh, bookshops. Uh, if people can Google them uh, throughout the world, so it's also available in South Africa as well. Is it yeah. is it also available as an ebook downloadable on Amazon or is it just physical? Yes, there, there is an an ebook as well on okay. Amazon. Great. So we've looked at chapter two. Uh, next week we're going to look at chapter three and go through again, find out from the author uh, the thought process that went through. Because I think from these conversations, you probably get uh, maybe a different perspective from the book itself. But um, I mean, read the book and enjoy your reading okay thank you elliot we're going to stop now thank you viewers uh join us next week uh same time we're going to be evaluating and analyzing chapter three of zimbabwe my home my frustration mm -hmm. with the view to take audit of where we have come from and where we are and where we are going as a people um reflected through the lens of the author thank you and good, good night good night and chapter three will be about the rise and rise of the mdc yeah thank you very much